Salesforce, OAuth, JWT, Bearer Flow Explained. Welcome to another video in the security series. We've been diving deep into the security OAuth flows, and today we're going to be talking about JWT Flow, or also known as Jot Flow, what it is and when to use it. In previous videos, I've been giving this summary about single sign-on and OAuth and talking about different times you would use them. We talked about a human user, single sign-on into a browser, would be going into straight direct login or single sign-on. Uh, in the next row, we have a human user using a mobile device, not through a browser, but a mobile device app. And in that, they should be using the web server with Pixie, P-K-C-E. Also talked about a human user using a browser to a third-party website, and then the third-party website accessing Salesforce data. But in this situation, the human's available. We can redirect them to a login page, and we can have the web server acting on their behalf. Now, there may be a time where we have a client, meaning not a human, but a server acting as a client, and it might just need to have a single user, an integration user. In that case, it may have direct client credentials, username and password. However, there may be times when you want to impersonate someone. You want a client to act on behalf of another user, and, but, the, uh, but the human is not available to log in and grant you access. So in that case, some of the tools you have available are the JWT flow, the SAML, SAML bearer assertion flow, and the SAML assertion flow. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the JWT flow. So this is where you're gonna have a client that is gonna act on behalf of a designated person, but unlike web server flow, we cannot have, we don't have direct access to this person, and we do not want to have those credentials stored anywhere um, other than the primary identity store. In past videos, I've used an analogy about why OAuth is like going to a beer garden. I've described going to the beer garden direct. I've even described web server flow going to a burger house and getting the food. In this particular scenario, we're gonna have a burger house is a client which wants to access the resource server, the secure data, the beer on my behalf, but I am not available. So they want to be able to get the, the, the secure data for me. Um, and in that particular case, the way it's gonna work is that the burger house becomes an approved secure vendor of the, um, of the beer garden by exchanging a digital certificate. And that, that is this gold circle here. So they have exchanged a digital certificate and what will end, you set up the proper connected app now, what will now happen is when the burger house wants to get data as Steve, what it will do is it will create the sealed envelope. It'll stick in Steve's username or the specific ID to identify him. And it will sign that with the digital certificate. That's that seal. And then it will send it on the JWC bearer token flow to the auth server. The auth server will then have that reciprocal digital certificate, be able to validate the signature, and because of the trust relationship with the signature, the, um, the authentication server will issue the burger house an access token. Now this is an access token for the burger house, but on behalf of Steve, using my credentials and any updates and changes will be flagged as the Steve user not a single specific integration user. So then the burger house will get back the access token and then can go to the resource server and get the secure data. Now, there's no need to go to the user. This could be a situation where you have a client that needs to get Salesforce data on a scheduled manner, on an ad hoc manner, and not initiated by the, uh, the human, Steve. So you're setting up a tight trusted relationship with, the, with the, um, the digital certificate and you're granting the burger house access to act on Steve's behalf or any number of additional users behalf. 
So going into the flow, the client, notice there is no left swim lane. There's no need for the human involvement. The client, client creates a JWT token and signs with certificate. It then presents it using, using a specific grant. It then validates it. They read the designated user. The access token is returned. And then the client presents the token and it's on behalf of the user. So to clarify, you're hitting the OAuth2 endpoint. You're sending a grant type. Actually, the grant type is JWT-bearer. The assertion is the entire JWT encoded. You need to encode the JWT um, to uh, token. And you have the um, parameter allows you to decide whether it's encoded, JSON, or XML. And so this will be what you send in. And what you will get back is the access token that the client can use on behalf of the user. So a situation where you might use this is if you have a third-party client, maybe a system like SAP, and it was pushing data into Salesforce, and you wanted those updates into Salesforce to be made with a specific user ID, not the integration user. So in that case, you'd want to make sure that you had the user in both systems, the user in the SAP system and the user in Salesforce. That way, when the call is made, the respective users exist as a Salesforce user, and you can then have the audit trail trace it to that user, Steve. Um, now, if I you, you may want to request data where an external system was calling into Salesforce and pulling data out with Steve's credentials. So this is a situation where the user is not around, but you want to read or write data in Salesforce on not just an integration user's account, but any number of uh, users' accounts. So you're going to create that special JWT relationship with the digital certificate and enable this access. So it's a very powerful tool for impersonation when reaching in from a trusted system. I would only use the JWT flow if you could really had control of both systems and you had a very strong trusted relationship. So thank you for jumping into JWT and join again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to Steve TechArc on YouTube and go to stevetecharc.com for great content. Have a great day.